banks would be local authorities would be the major recipient of government cuts. Um, so I guess what I've observed over that decade has been there's enormous cuts to council facilities, um, a huge loss of the council staff, and particular issues around scrutiny of how decisions are made, how money is spent, and huge parts that work just aren't funded anymore. So what we've created are a series of blind spots and gaps where people used to have a full picture of what went on, and that's now been taken away. Um, so I quickly grasp, I guess, the significance of those trends with hereabouts and deregulation, um, privatisation, and outsourcing responsibility we have these kind of opaque, long-winded supply chains no one really knows who's responsible anymore. And the, the contribution those things all had to the fire in Grenco. Um, I also naturally sense to be a large extent of corruption involved. Um, many people suspected there would be you know, cover-ups both at the council level and at the Westminster level because of the ramifications of what happened and the fact that it exposed decades of failed government policy. Um, and so I guess, yeah, the, the Greenfield Tower has become this very powerful symbol of an ideological obsession with cuts, deregulation, where we've tried to obscure cause and effect, and that effect being social murder of 72 people, as we've heard. So one of my favourite British writers is George Orwell, and Orwell once wrote, the English have a world famed for hypocrisy. England is the most class ridden country under the sun. It is a land of snobbery and privilege, ruled largely by the old and silly. <laughs> Nowhere is this more true than the local government, where the average councillor is 60 years old. 96% of councillors are white, just 31% are female. The phrase pale, male, and stale is never seen more apt, and of course, this is still the same. At Kenton and Chelsea Council. Our communities are not well respected, not represented within local government. Orwell also said the most hateful of all names in the English ear is the word, the phrase nosy Parker. By this, Orwell meant that English are culturally conditioned to mind their own business, to not snoop, and to not question those in authority. Why is Kensington and Chelsea not using fire safe planning? when they have £293 million pounds sitting in reserves. But when you're ruled by the old and the silly, corrupt power only persists if the lower rungs of society are socialised not to ask questions, to not be nosy parkers. What that nosy parker culture creates is an environment which is extremely conducive to fraud and to corruption. In the military, it's known as don't ask, don't tell. In the mafia, as I murder, and in the City of London, nod, nod, wink, wink. Fat bonuses and non-disclosure agreements and people never speak up. Most Tory MPs now come from the city, like Sajid Javid, the former local government minister. The result is a particularly British phenomenon where a country which is an undisputed centre of global money laundering and financial fraud simultaneously holds itself up as moral and refined. A basket of global democracy despite ample evidence to the, culture, to the contrary. Being a freelance journalist and researcher, I spend a lot of my time sending information requests to local authorities, being a nosy parker. <laughs> I've never been a stickler for rules that I don't respect or view as unjust, and because of that I've been labelled vexatious by local authorities just for asking questions in the public interest. Shortly after the Greenfield fire, through connections and a random series of events, Lily Allen advised myself and a friend to look around the Greenfield area to get a feel for what's happening on the ground and to start investigating the local council and witness the community's response. We went down to the council and requested Greenfield Tower for documents, so things like invoices, um, contracts, um, where the council spent money on fire risk assessments, look at the state of the building, and we refused access to these documents on the basis they were commercially sensitive. So again, kind of commercial interests trumping public interest. My colleague Fanny Madeline sent FOIs to the council that remained unanswered months later, prompting a warning by the information commissioner who was supposed to police that space. Having previously researched Kensington and Chelsea as a hotbed of neoliberal municipal finance, I already knew some of the faces involved in the decision making that led to the deaths of these 72 people. 
Those people are Samira Kokul, the former leader of Kensington and Chelsea Council, and the former head of the Local Government Association. And Tom Fairhead, who was previously a member of finance at RBKC, and is also the husband of HSBC banker and former BBC Trust boss, Rona Fairhead. In response to Greenfield, working with people like David White, Leeds-based academics Megan Moore and Stuart Hodkinson, Research for Actions submitted evidence to the public inquiry, and some of the findings were absolutely shocking. RBKC, led by Cockle and Fairhead, engaged in a deliberate five-year policy of council tax cuts, where rebates were given to wealthy residents, which they framed as an efficiency dividend. So what they were saying is, the council is so good at uh, not spending public money on poor people, we need to give lost money back to rich people in the borough. Despite savage central government austerity, Kensington and Chelsea decided unnecessarily to take more money away from frontline services used by the poorest in the borough and to return this money to the wealthiest to spend in luxury shops. Over this period, about 10 years, from 2008-09 um, through to this year, uh, Kensington's own income from council tax fell by £125 million pounds because of this policy. That's enough money to pay for the full Greenfield Tower refurbishment, about 10 times over. Since the Tories came to power in 2010, the life expectancy of the poorest residents in RBKC was reduced by six years. The gap in life expectancy between the richest and poorest in the borough is 22 years. So it's not just in Greenfield Tower where residents of the rural borough have been killed prematurely by the central policies. Contempt for the poor and failure to serve the public interest are commonplace. And I would point to people like Sajid Javid and Gavin Bowell as being particularly helpful here. Um, so I'll leave it there. Yeah,